this is Kelly Bennett for Backstage 360. We are at the National Association of Music Merchants, otherwise known as NAM, here in Anaheim, California. She's not lying, look. <laughs> <laughs> and I am standing, or I'm standing, you're sitting, the absolutely phenomenal Bobby Kimball. Oh. How are you? <laughs> this man's from Toto. Toto. I am the original lead singer of Toto. I know. I was with them two different times for 18 years. Wow, so we talked... I absolutely love Toto always. We do too. And the funny thing is, oh, is that I'm we sure were talking do. about how the music inspired so many people. And when you sing, it brings them back to those days of when they were young and they heard the songs for the first time and they can remember where they were and, and what they were doing. And you were telling me earlier about how people come see you on stage. Oh, yes. And they, yes. And they talk thousands, about that. Thousands, thousands. It's so wonderful. And you are loved everywhere, right? Yes, I go everywhere in the world. And you, you said you were on um, a tour like 200 days out of the year? I'm on the road 200 or 250 days a year, and that does not bother me at all. I absolutely adore playing for thousands of people. And after the in the last concert, the the last uh, song, they a bunch of them run up to the stage and say, "We want to do autographs and photos." And well, I tell them, y "You go backstage or." If you can't, I will go out front. That's right. And I'll do it, and I'll spend an hour and a half or three hours doing that. Now, you were, how did the name Toto come about? Okay. Well, the two guys that put Toto together, mm -hmm. all right, they didn't have a name for the band yet. Right. It was David Page, mm -hmm. the keyboard player, and, and Jeff Picaro, the drummer. Mm -hmm. And they are absolutely two of the most unbelievable great musicians I've ever heard. But David Page went to Jeff Picaro's house and they talked for a, on the couch for about two hours about who they were going to put into the band and where they were going to record the first album. And this was back in 70, 70 what, 70? 70. 70. 77. 77, okay, yeah. gotcha. Oh, 1977. Well, 1977, of course, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Not, not 77. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, 1977 is right. when it got together. And the thing is, is when they talked for two hours about who they were putting in the band and, and where they were going to record, right across from them a television was on, and they they finished talking. They didn't have a name for the band, and when they looked at the television, <laughs> It said it, it had the Wizard of Oz movie on, and a little <laughs> dog ran out, and a guy ran behind it and said, Toto, we're not in Kansas anymore. And my God, Jeff Picaro tapped David's shoulder and said, Oh, that should be the name of our band, Toto. That's right. And That's right. they called me and told me to come and sing. Well, that band has been loved for years, and now your t shirt. Well, Tell me about Actually, that. Actually, last year, I wrote, uh, I did an album with a guy named John Zaker, and he wrote the music, I wrote the lyrics, and sang the songs, uh -huh. and he went to the record label, Cleopatra, in the USA, and he named the album for, for me, he says, Bobby Kimball, we're not in Kansas anymore. <laughs> Do you like the t-shirt? You got that? I can't Isn't tell that you. cool? I, I laughed so hard when I heard that. It, you know, it was a good idea. Right. Now, the song Africa. Let's talk about the song Africa. Oh, my God. That's a big and one. That's a big Jeff one. Jeff Picaro and David Page are the ones that wrote that song. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's amongst my favorite, besides Rosanna. Mm -hmm. And it's so fun for me to do, and, and uh, they, they wrote it so well. Jeff was playing uh, the, the, uh, the beat on the drum, mm -hmm. and David Page would sit down and, and play the music mm -hmm. for that beat. Mm -hmm. And they got together and did the lyrics. Now, I read somewhere where they actually went to Africa and taped something or did a video of some sort of, of playing in Africa that song, Africa. We went everywhere in the world. <laughs> Not a problem. Right, right. Yeah. It's such a beaut it's such a beautiful song. Such a beautiful song. And you're I've gonna been be to Africa so many times you oh, wouldn't believe it. Thank you so much for your music. I can't wait to see you there. I can't wait to see you on stage. 
I will be there. <laughs> okay, we're gonna hear from Toto later. You were abs anything else you want to say? I mean, you you have so many adoring fans. Well, I'm, I'm not with Toto now. I know, but we still love but you. Who cares? I have nine bands that I use around the world. We love you just because yeah. of you. I absolutely adore, and I absolutely always have a love. Toto. I know. Toto's the best. Yes, they're they're wonderful. Toto, we're not in Kansas anymore. <laughs> <laughs> we're not. We're not in Kansas anymore. <laughs> well, that's it for Backstage 360. I'm Kelly Bennett with the wonderful Bobby Kimball. Thank you so much for joining us. No problem. It was so good to join. Thank you. <laughs> you take care. Thanks. Wait. <laughs> I put I did that behind your head. <laughs> Wait. <Woo -hoo. laughs> hey everybody, this is Brian from Backstage 360. We're with the band Bias, and with us to my right, your left, is Joe. Joe, what's up? Hey, how's it going, man? How you been? I've been good. It seems to me like the last time you and I did this, there was an announcement for another new band that was uh, presenting themselves at NAM. Yeah. What was that, three, four years ago? It was, uh, yeah, about three years ago. About three years ago. And we're here today to talk about Bias now and yeah. the new project. And go ahead and uh, introduce the band for us. Okay. Uh, well, I'm Joe Tabak, and I play uh, guitar and backup vocals. Uh, this is Mike Martin, and uh, he plays second guitar. Uh, we've got Rich Nguyen, which is our uh, brand new vocalist, Chris Dorme, and uh, obviously David Silvera <laughs> playing drums. So you got some uh, projects working and some new material. What, uh, what have you got working right now? You said there's a couple new songs that are just getting ready to hit or they've just hit? Uh, we just dropped them. Uh, it was January 4th, basically. And uh, yeah, we wanted to kind of show our range, so we, we uh, dropped an A-side and a B-side single. Um, one that's a, a little heavier, a little more groovier, and then one that's a little more melodic, a little more, you know, uh, emotional, I guess, if you will. So, so for th people that want to come out and see you now and listen to you, what, describe the type and style of music that you guys are hitting. Or, or is that even a bad thing to try and no, go there? No, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it, we've been kind of uh, genre-defying. We've had people come on, you know, we've had a great response as far as, um, you know, people that have listened to our music. I mean, we're up to like 17 or 18,000 views in 14 days or something like that. And, uh, you know, that some of them are saying that we're new, new grunge metal. Uh, new but, <laughs> is that a new term altogether? New grunge metal? I think it is. Is I that think new age it grunge? New? Yeah, I guess it's it's something. But um, sounds good. You can you can get a a little bit of all of our uh, you know our influences and our backgrounds and where we come from come with the music. Um, you know, there's some pretty stuff. There's harmonies that Rich and I do together. Um, but we also get heavy. We obviously got David's signature groove. Um, that we, you know, is the backbone of our music of where we come from. So, um. well, let me turn, turn to you real quick, Dave, as as the ex drummer for Corn. Obviously, there's something in this project that you really see and are excited about. What what do you see with this particular band and where it's going forward? Um, I think. What's really exciting is when we're in the studio and we work together, everybody feeds off of each other. So if anybody, any one of us has an idea, everyone else will embrace it and take it and try to work work with it. And I mean, a lot of them have turned into songs or at least parts of songs. And um, that that's actually probably one of the best feelings about being in a band with collaborating with everybody, with everybody has an input and everybody's open for everyone's ideas and, and tries everything that everyone puts forward. So technically then this, this band doesn't really have a writer of the songs, it's a collaboration with the entire band. Absolutely, everything is. And so with that, there's there's a lot more feed and direction. So does do the styles from the, everybody's background clash with that or do they actually complement everything and actually create that direction? I think everyone brings their own unique style to the band and it, everyone seems to be complimenting each other. I mean, it hasn't been any problems yet. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure there aren't going to be. So what's on the schedule for tours and how do people find out about this band? Where can they go see you? Um, well, we have two songs that Joe set out right now on iTunes, um, Change Your Mind and Pity. Um, playing a show tonight here for them at the Schechter After Party. And we 
we are going to continue to write and record songs in the studio, uh, you know, in, for the foreseeable future. We'll see what happens. Now, the band's based out of Orange County, is that correct? Correct, yeah. And so uh, the local venues would apply, I assume, in this in this case? You're starting to hit the local venues in support of the album? Yeah, I mean, honestly, we haven't done uh, much as far as uh, venues and everything. We did we did a little secret show. Just it's to not going to be just a studio <laughs> band, right? <laughs> no, no, we're definitely playing out, and we're, we're definitely looking to play out uh, with, 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 you know, other bands. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we've been together for four months, so we're, we're just kind of just getting our groove as far as that's concerned. This is our first official show this evening. Um, we did a little benefit show for a buddy of mine that passed away for his family a couple weeks back uh, just to raise some money to help them out sure. um, and uh, give us a little practice for this because um, we're playing in front of everybody in the industry at the NAMM show. So it's like, um, and... Uh, you know, after this, we're just going to keep planning on uh, writing some songs. We'll definitely do some more shows and, and uh, hopefully open up for some bigger bands and, and uh, you know, just keep getting our feet wet and keep pushing forward and writing music. So we've got the two songs out right now, and then will there be a completion of, the, of an LP that maybe be released by the end of the year? Um, we're, we're trying to have an album's worth of stuff by summertime so that's our goal at this point um, our first goal was just to release a couple songs and and be ready to go by now and when we found rich uh, with the nationwide actually worldwide singer search uh, once we got in we things happened really quick and, and we got to reach these goals so now it's just get you know setting out what's the next step for bias basically and it's going to be playing some shows definitely keep writing music for a full-length album hopefully to be out by by the mid or end of summer who's in charge of the website <laughs> I was just going to throw the website's name out there and everything so people can get a hold of you, but evidently we can't do that. On the Facebook, Instagram, <laughs> Facebook, and we're, we use Facebook, and we're, we're all basically administrators on there, so whoever sees the comment will you know, respond. We do have a website. It's biasband.com. But right now it's just uh, shooting you over to Facebook because we don't have Still a built. site built. Yeah, it's in their, under construction. The amazing thing about post-production is right now as we're speaking, that website address is scrolling across the screen. Oh, so, nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, you guys need to check this band out. They'll be playing around you soon, and hopefully by the end of summer you're going to see that new album. Guys, thank you so much for taking Absolutely. some time with us, thank man. You, Appreciate it. Backstage 360, we'll check in later. What's up everybody, Timmy D with Backstage 360 Magazine. Welcome back. I'm standing out here in the courtyard right near the arena stage, um, hanging out with the cool, the one and only, Miss Veda Black. How you doing? I'm so great, how are you? Oh, I'm doing top notch. It's good to see you. I'm so glad we get to hang out. So let's just get right into it. You have two singles out yes. that you're really excited about. What is the sound? Tell the audience what they can look forward to in hearing those. Well, okay, so my first single that I put out was called Face Down, and that's kind of trip hoppy. So it's got a trip hop, like Portis head vibe, I've been told. So that's, it's really cool. I like that one a lot. And then my newer one, I just released this fall, it's called Suicide Love, and that's just like a piano ballad, mm. and it's like really heart wrenching. It's, it gets me. It's very it special. It evokes the soul. Yes, 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 yes. Where does that come from? Like, what was that goo that kind of brought it out? Inspiration was just like my, I guess my experiences with love and like what it means to me. And what does love mean to you? Oh, that's a loaded question. <laughs> that's, I'm still figuring it out. Exactly. <laughs> We're all figuring it out. Yeah. All right. So you got your start in music at an early age and you've made your way to here. Where are we going in the future? What, what direction are we taking it? Well, I definitely want to like do this for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. So I'm just looking to expand on like the kind of music I make, and I don't want to like limit myself to a genre. I want to try to like do things that are different and things that are true to me instead of like doing what other people want me to do. So like I'm just gonna try like to stick true to what I am as an artist. Is there anybody that you've had the opportunity to work with so far? <sighs> like any other artists? Yes. Um. 
I've worked with a couple of people locally who from, I'm from Long Island, New York. So um, this guy, he's in the band called The Deep End. His name is Max McGill. I've worked with him. We wrote a song together. It was pretty cool. Um, I write with a lot of people, but we haven't really gotten to that yet. So let's take the audience through a typical songwriting session. You've already got these ideas for lyrics. Where do you go from there when you're writing? Well, usually when I'm when I'm writing, I start with like I'll be walking around my house or like literally just like in some random public place, and I'll get inspiration. I'm like, I need to write. I need to write. So I pull out my notebook, which goes everywhere with me. Of course. And I jot down lyrics, and if I have a melody, I'll sing it into my phone, like really quiet and like awkwardly. And then <laughs> I'll go sit down at the piano and try to find like a chord progression that works with it. Mm -hmm. And then that's where I go from there. And if I want to work with someone on it or like collaborate with somebody. I like to maybe bring lyrics or a melody and like hear what they have to do, like or add to that. It's kind of it's interesting. All right, let's get it. Let's get away from the music. I'm gonna do a top five. <laughs> All right, pastries or candy? Candy. All right, hamburgers or hot dogs? Hamburgers. Sushi or Thai food? Sushi. When you came to LA and you got off the, you did take a plane here, correct? Yes. Okay. Got you didn't take a train or, a, or an automobile? <laughs> no. All right. You got off the plane. First impression? Well, it was, it was 3 a.m. New York time and it was only 12 here. So I was exhausted. But first impression was it's a lot warmer here than it is in New York now. It was six degrees last week. So. Mm -hmm. Who is somebody that obviously you yourself is an amalgamation of many a styles, yeah. but somebody who inspires you? Oh, uh, like fashion wise? Oh yeah. That's so hard. Because I'm still like trying to figure out my fashion, but I guess I really like Lana Del Rey mm. and like what she wears. Also, um not so much like the slutty stuff that this person wears, but like I like not not necessarily slutty, but like Lady Gaga, her fashion sense is like it's classy. And yet she's still very exposed yes. a lot of the time. Yes. Do you think that has to do with confidence? Um, yeah, I think that she's very comfortable in her own skin. Well, you seem very comfortable in your skin. You have a lot of confidence. You actually are very, you have that charisma, which is a great start, and uh, that's a great way to go with fashion. So let's get away from fashion, though. One last thing, movies. Okay. Movies. Your favorite uh, genre of movies. Horror. Okay. Yes, I love scary movies so much. Did you see Bird Box? Is that the one with the... Oh, yeah. Yeah, I saw Bird Box. Not impressed. Thank you. I agree. The ending was just like, what? Okay. Like, what happened? What? <laughs> I know we're getting so off topic, but it's just, <laughs> I really, like, I find that with artists, you, like, when people talk, they, you talk about your music so much with people, and then it's like, yeah, but how does that music come to pass? So you like horror movies. Yeah. Is there any movies out there that inspired some of your music? Like, did you see a movie, and you were like, oh my gosh, I gotta write something that puts me in this mood? Well, I definitely like writing creepy things. Um, I have a song in my set. Well, this probably has to do with my love for horror, but I have a song on my set called Drunken Tears, and it's about luring someone into a bar and murdering them. That's hot. Yeah. <laughs> so, I always do a disclaimer before my show, I'm not going to kill anybody. Yeah, no, yeah, I think it's so. sometimes it's very representative. Like, I used to listen to My Chemical Romance a lot, and uh, they talk about all the, I mean, they're emo, and so they're talking about slitting wrists and yeah. blood and all this stuff. And they don't really mean doing that. Maybe they do, I don't yeah. know, but... You know, you gotta sometimes you gotta go down that rabbit hole and uh, every once in a while step back out. But yeah. okay, I'm getting way off topic. Let's talk about where people can find you. Go for it. All right, well, if you guys wanna find me, I'm at Veda Black on literally everything, and my website is vedablack.com. So that's V A E D A B L A C K dot com or at Veda Black. Boom. And there we go, Veda yes. Black. Veda, it's been nice hanging out with you, nice talking with you. with you. Good luck with everything you're performing right down the yes. way. Awesome. Uh, let's look at the camera and give a peace sign really quick. I'm, I don't know what I'm. That's. I see all the, all the kids are doing that right now. But, ladies and gentlemen, for Backstage 360 Magazine, Veda Black. I'm Timmy D. Rock and roll.